Hey everybody, it's Andrew Cartwright here, and I hope you're having a fabulous TGIF Friday. Here's your unemployment update for Friday, November 20th, 2020. A lot of 20s, huh? 11, 20, 20, 20, yeah. Find out why a new report shows an increase in poverty rates following the end of the weekly $600 unemployment benefits. Duh. The state that has blocked at least $1.2 in unemployment fraud. That's tough. And details on high-paying job opportunity that's made specifically for low-income Americans after this. For the best news and information to master your money, business, and life, stay tuned to this channel. It also, you know, it pays to be here. How? If you subscribe, like, and comment, you're entered to win $1,200 because when we hit 120,000 subscribers, which we're on our way, thank you so much. If this is your first time, welcome. Subscribe. Hang around. Put a comment. It could pay you 1200 bucks. We pick a random comment. We give that away. Also, grab your Weeble stock down below. Click on it. If you haven't done it yet, you'll get three stocks. It's so awesome. You open up an account and you get free stocks. It's so cool. But first, a recent report from multiple universities showed that the poverty rate increased by 2%. Earlier this summer, which was when the FPUC weekly $600 unemployment benefit ended. No, duh. Yeah, bring it back. It's obvious. We need it because what people didn't have jobs. Of course, you cut off the funding. It also shows that the poverty rate increased to 11.3%, which is horrible, during the month of September and October compared to 9.4% in April and June when we hadn't we hadn't gotten down that road yet. Well, now we're down that road. Uh, Bruce Meyer, a co-author on the study, explained, quote, the poverty rate fell initially in the pandemic because we initially provided a lot of aid. He continued, quote, people are running down their stock of savings if they had any. They already asked about borrowing money from their family and friends. There are ways to cope and starting to run out. They're starting to just not have a place to go to get any funds. Like, hey, you got some money? No, I ain't. you got some money? No, I ain't got some money. Anybody got money? Nobody's got money? Oh, hey, government, could you give us some money? Yeah, because you close down the jobs and people don't have the money. Hopefully, these disturbing numbers can force Congress to act quickly on another stimulus package with ample extended enhanced unemployment benefits to help us get through the rest of the crazy year. These economists, they work very hard to put these reports together. And if you'll just look at them, they spent all the time putting it together. Just give them a little peruse, right? Just look at them. And meanwhile, the great state of New Jersey recently announced that they have stopped at least $1.2 billion in fraudulent unemployment claims across the state. I guess they don't have a rapper like in California that's taken $1.2 million. The New Jersey Department of Labor and Workforce Development has called this week National Fraud Awareness Week with an effort to alert states on identity theft and fleshing scams using the unemployment system. That's where they send you an email, a text. If you open up a picture on your phone that you don't recognize where it's coming from, you could also lose your data. Or if somebody sends you an email and then you get the email and you open the email and next thing you know, they're copying all your keystrokes on your computer and getting information. It's not cool. The Labor Commissioner Robert Asario Angelo, I feel like AOC here, right? The guy's like, must be cousins, or something like that, explained, quote, we're urging every business owner to review their quarterly benefits reports for our department and the disciplined and vigilant about reporting any inconsistencies to us immediately. Like, they need our help, right? Because their systems, they're pretty bad. He continued, in addition to sophisticated anti-fraud measures we have in place, we need you to be our partners in preventing fraud so we can stay two steps ahead of the criminals and you don't suffer financially. Because guess what? If we don't get this, somebody else gets it, we have to pay it back. So hopefully the 1.2 billion that they have secured from the fraudsters, thank you, can go to actually New Jersey citizens in need of unemployment support from the government. Yeah, it's a bank account. When the money goes and goes to the wrong person, then the right person doesn't get the money. That sucks. We need to kill fraud. And finally, here's a really cool story 
coming out of the Big Apple, a, a nonprofit located in Queens called Pursuit. That's kind of cool, right? Which teaches people how to code on computers, is making a concerted effort to put low-income workers in high-paying tech jobs, like two, $300,000. Yeah, give me a piece of that. So what's the bottom line? Here it is. Pursuit graduates roughly 140 students a year, bringing an average, a jump from $18,000, which is like can't buy food annually, right? Pre-program, that's before they finish the program. And then when they finish the program, a whopping $85,000 a year post-program for some coding. Yes, code. CEO Jack A. Sue believes that the community is key to a thriving business and that traditional college degrees requirements is a bit outdated. Sue explained, quote, college degree is such a traditional mark of a class. Wow, he did say that, didn't he? After ensuring that pursuit students had access to materials, Sue put up $100,000 in an emergency fund that anyone could access if, you, if in need of emergency support. Wow, this guy's just, he's out there, right? Going against the big boys, Harvard and all these other big colleges. That's a bold statement. With plans to have more students in the program shortly, Sue explained, quote, our work is more important and urgent than ever. Oh, this is an amazing program that can help get qualified low-income employees the chance they've been waiting for for a job in a lucrative and blossoming industry like computers. They're not going away. I'm on, like, there are computers everywhere, right? Like, everywhere we look. These things, this thing, it all needs coding people to code. So, and if you have not applied for your unemployment assistance, now is the time before somebody who gets your name applies for it. Okay, I'm just kidding. That's a really bad joke, but pretty present, right? So if you need these funds and you haven't applied for them, make sure you start out your weekend right and go apply for these. Just visit the PUA or the UI, that's the Pandemic Unemployment Assistance or the Unemployment Ins uh, insurance website, submit your information, give them your documentation, your employment history, and let them know that you're out of work due to the virus, which you're not alone. It's totally worth it if you submit your application as you could be eligible for a backdated check, backdated all the way to when you were unemployed. Don't lie, right? You'll get a check ten to $15,000 if you've been out of work since the beginning of this craziness. To all you gig workers, self-employed, independent contractors, 1099 workers, even side hustle and volunteers and freelancers that think that you do not qualify, I know this sounds like a broken record and it's crazy, but the PUA program was made just for you and it's part of the CARES Act. Just go get it. If you've been unemployed, if you haven't been making the money that you're supposed to be making or would be making if things were normal, so go get it. You're, you're, you're covered. The government took care of you. Don't miss out on your chance to receive these incredible government unemployment benefits before they expire, which is like in 40 days. Don't miss out, please. If you need them, get them and spend them. Buy some food, right? Please share your experience with the PUA and unemployment benefits in your state. And please be safe out there because it is crazy, right? Thanks for watching. I'm Andrew Cartwright. Take care. I love you.